Scientists endorse mass civil disobedience to force climate action. Here's a summary of the article. London, almost 400 scientists have endorsed a civil disobedience campaign aimed at forcing governments to take rapid action to tackle climate change, warning that failure could inflict incalculable human suffering. In a joint declaration, climate scientists, physicists, biologists, engineers and others from at least 20 countries broke with the caution traditionally associated with academia to side with peaceful protesters courting arrest from Amsterdam to Melbourne. The declaration was coordinated by a group of scientists who support Extinction Rebellion, a civil disobedience campaign that formed in Britain a year ago and has since sparked offshoots in dozens of countries. While many scientists have shunned overt political debate, fearing that being perceived as activists might undermine their claims to objectivity, the 395 academics who had signed the declaration by 1100 GMT on Sunday chose to defy convention. The urgency of the crisis is now so great that many scientists feel, as humans, that we now have a moral duty to take radical action, Grossman told Reuters. Other signatories included several scientists who contributed to the UN-backed Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which has produced a series of reports underscoring the urgency of dramatic cuts in carbon emissions. It hopes the scientists' support for the urgency of its message and its embrace of civil disobedience will bolster its legitimacy and draw more volunteers. This post received a score of 34,339, with an upvote ratio of 87%. Here are the top comments in response to this article. MLK's letter from Birmingham jail in which he defends the use of civil disobedience. Greater than just as Socrates felt that it was necessary to create a tension in the mind so that individuals could rise from the bondage of myths and half-truths to the unfettered realm of creative analysis and objective appraisal, so must we see the need for non-violent gadflies to create the kind of tension in society that will help men rise from the dark depths of prejudice and racism to the majestic heights of understanding and brotherhood. Goddamn, is he good or what? He's fucking good. Had to be, to get people to listen to him back then. You still have to be good to get people to listen to you now. Whoever has the most money has replaced many people worth listening to. Tempting hypothesis, but. Dr. Amy McKay, Political Research Quarterly. We need to stop treating our serious issues as a species like some twisted team sport. These types of arguments just go around and around pissing everyone involved off. I know it can get discouraging and a lot of people just throw in the towel and give up, but you have to remember that individuals are random and chaotic, but progress comes collectively. If one person refuses to change don't give up, because what our ultimate goal should be is to influence the immediate and future situations hopefully to abandon this type of mindset. An elder gave me advice today that applies here. Ask those questions and challenge those beliefs. Your words will be like water slowly dripping on a boulder. Water is powerful, changing the shape of the boulder until it finally cracks in two. It will take time, that's why the water needs to always drip. Not giving a gun and a badge to violent people, helping people who truly, legitimately need it, and ensuring that people are held accountable for their crimes. Oftentimes, there are questions that they have never asked or preconceived assumptions about other people's intentions. I got him to realize that most people receiving welfare probably aren't lazing around with no desire to find work because he knows how it feels to be stuck at home, bored out of his mind with nothing to do. We can agree on the notion that people have a natural and powerful drive to want to work and feel accomplishment. Returning the revenue as an equitable dividend, in fact, and allows for a higher carbon price, which, because, enacting a border tax, would protect domestic businesses from foreign producers not saddled with similar pollution taxes, and also, to enact their own, are that failing to mitigate climate change will cost us 10% of GDP over 50 years. In contrast, carbon taxes may actually boost GDP, if the revenue is the, which, not to mention, and, save lives, taxing carbon, it, and, which, in poor countries, countries, in the first place. The U.S., according to, most of the $5.2 trillion in subsidies for fossil fuels come from not taxing carbon as we should. There is general agreement among economists on carbon taxes whether you consider, or, it is literally, Econ 101, the idea. This video was automatically created by Reddit to Speech. The article and comments in this video were selected from Reddit according to their upvotes, and any paraphrasing was performed by smmry.com, without any human intervention.